If you like what you're hearing on the phillytech.org netcast network, please consider supporting the network with a small monthly donation via patreon.com slash phillytechorg. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-h-i-l-l-y-t-e-c-h-o-r-g. And thank you in advance. You're listening to the Nutrition Philly Podcast your host, Brittany Kennedy, on the phillytech.org netcast network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Nutrition Philly podcast. Uh, We're in episode number seven. I feel like it was just yesterday when we started these. Uh, So yeah, so number seven. Um, So today I want to talk about goals because obviously it's 2016, it's a new year, and I hate talking about goal setting the first week of January because I feel like no one's really in the groove yet. So I want to take the time now, middle of the month, to talk about maybe a little bit more realistic way to set your goals and um, you know also to evaluate if the goals that you set out in the first week of January are actually realizing themselves. So, yeah, that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, so, obviously, when we're looking at goals for the new year, people have a million different goals. Obviously, there's a million listed here for you. You know, people want to lose weight, they want to save money, they want to live healthier, they want to join a gym, they, you know, they want to do all these things. But the question is, how do you actually achieve all of these things? Um, you know, one, how do you get it done? And two, how do you do it without going crazy? Because a lot of times people take on too much than they can handle and then don't really achieve anything at all. So what we're going to talk about today is how to make that happen. So the best way I like to think about setting goals is to try to make SMART goals. Um, And obviously that stands for more than just, you know, the definition of SMART. But what we're looking at here is, is your goal specific? Is it measurable, attainable, realistic, and time limited or time bound, as some people like to say? Um, this is a really good way to look at your goals because like I said, a lot of people have really lofty goals or they have a lot of things they want to achieve. So kind of pinpointing the best way to get all this done, um, is going to help you, you know, kind of start digging through all these things you want to accomplish this year. So the first thing to look at is, you know, is your goal specific? Is it something that you can pinpoint down? Um, a lot of times people will say, well, I want to get healthier in 2016. Well, how is that going to happen? Key example, uh, when you're picking something to change about your dietary habits, pick one thing in your day that you want to kind of work on first. Clear example is late night snacking. People snack at night more often than obviously they should, and the things we're snacking on tend to be high carbohydrates, high amounts of sugar. So let's be specific here. So if your goal is, I want to stop snacking in the evening, That's not really specific because it doesn't really explain how you're going to do it and what you're going to snack on instead of these unhealthy things that you usually have. So an easy way to make this specific is to say, my late night snack is going to be a piece of fruit. So instead of trying to eliminate that unhealthy habit, you're actually just trying to change it. So that way, it's a little bit easier to look at. Second part of your goal is is this measurable? So is this something that you can look at and figure out if you're actually achieving? In the case of your late night snacking and your fruit, an easy way to measure that is to look at your overall fruit intake. If your overall fruit intake every day is increasing each day, that means that you're achieving your goal of making your late night snack a little bit healthier. Uh, Third part of your goal setting is, is it attainable? So this could be looked at in two different ways. You know, the first way is to say, is this goal physically possible for me to achieve? You know, most of the time, yes, it is. But more specifically, what you should be asking yourself is, how am I going to set myself up to be successful in achieving this goal? You know, so how are you actually going to make it happen? So again, if we're looking at the example of the apple in the evening as your snack, an easy way to make this possible is to make sure that you have fruit at your house. If you don't have fruit at your house, you're not going to eat it. (laughs) So make it a point to go to the grocery store once a week, pick a day that you get a lot of your shopping done and make sure you pick up a lot of fruit. So that way at night when you want to snack on something, you don't have 
unhealthy choices in your house. You have healthy choices, tons of fruit, it'll make it so much easier. So the fourth part of this is, is your goal realistic? In the case of late night snacking, replacing it with a piece of fruit, I think that's pretty realistic for most people. But the problem is that a lot of us pick more than one goal um, to achieve at a time. So again, if you're looking to become healthy, I too often hear people say, okay, I'm gonna stop my late night snacking, I'm going to increase my water intake to 10 glasses a day, um, I'm going to eat salads every day and egg whites for breakfast. Okay, that's, that's like an overload for most people. So take it one step at a time. Be realistic with this. You know, look at fixing one thing or working on one thing at a time. Once you've achieved it, move on to the next thing. Last part of this is time limited or time bound. There has to be a specific amount of time that you're shooting for to achieve these goals that you're setting out. Because if you tell yourself, okay, I'm going to improve my healthy eating in 2016, does that mean you have all year to achieve it? Does it mean you have six months to achieve it? No one really knows. So if you give yourself a set amount of time to get these things done, you actually achieve more throughout this year too. So a big thing with time bound is you know, people are always on this kick that it takes 21 days to kick a habit or build a new habit. Um, it's actually not true. Uh, recent science is showing that it actually takes 66 days to make a new habit stick. That's actually three times the amount of time that we initially thought, which kind of goes to show you that this isn't easy and you have to give yourself time. So give yourself maybe a two month time frame. You say, okay, I give myself two months to improve my nighttime snacking. Track it. Make sure you keep your house stocked with healthy food. In that two months, you'll find that you'll definitely be on the right track. Then as soon as those two months are up and you've achieved your goal, pick another goal and then move on from there. So when you're looking at your goals this year, um, I really just want to make sure that everyone's looking at them realistically. You definitely want to set goals, but make sure they're realistic. You know, Make sure that you actually have the tools at home to make them a reality. And also make sure that you have a good support system. Make sure your family's on board with these new, you know, healthy goals that you're trying to achieve. And, you know, they might actually benefit from doing some of them too. So hopefully today this uh, quick goal setting guide has helped you guys, especially midway through January. This is when we tend to uh, stop achieving our goals. So hopefully this is giving you a little bit of an oomph. And um, I look forward to seeing all of you achieve your goals in 2016. Talk to you guys later. Bye.